Hi and welcome back today. Uh, I was sitting in early this morning, uh, well not super early, around 9 or so, sitting in on Sam Towns' um, live stream where he was designing his sword handle, which he come up with a real pretty design. I, you know, that's really sweet what he's going to do to it. But what brings me out to make this video right here is Kenny at Metal Man Productions asked Sam what he, I believe he asked, this was before I got into the, the chat or before I joined it, that he had uh, probably asked him what he used for his hamon because he's making a couple of Japanese style swords or knives or water tantos or wakatashis or something like that. But anyway, that being said, he wanted to know about hamons a little bit. Now, everything I do, every knife that I make, yes, about every knife, I might slip one or two through, but by and large, every knife that I do, I put a, a hamon on it. And uh, do I have to? No, I don't have to. It's just something I want to do because I like the, the differential hardness of the blade. It absorbs shock and helps reduce chipping and carrying on like it. And my philosophy is a bent knife is easier to fix than a broke knife. So I always clay the uh, the wrist right there where it goes from, goes from blade to handle right there. I always clay this up. Now this one's hard as it, it can be. and. Uh, but anyway, I believe Ken wanted to know what he used. Sam, unless he's changed, uses Satanite. Because I've asked him the same question and he says Satanite. That's his go-to. That's fine. I ain't got a thing in God's world wrong with it. You can do it like some of the, the Japanese sword makers. They actually dip the whole knife in it, their whole sword in it, and, and slip. Which is like a ceramic clay it's just really thin clay and it just puts a really thin layer on it that helps with scale when they do it and then they come through and they put their little lines in they will put clay on on the, the edges of the blades down and just little lines they take anything a little pencil or piece of wood or whatever and make the little lines down through there and they'll clay the back of it with a, a clay they Japanese has got specialty items for everything. I mean for everything. When it comes to knife making, tool making, whatever. They've got special ingredients for special tools or special things that they do on a knife or whatever. They've got it. So, because they've been doing it for thousands of years. So, yeah. Like he said, uh, I've seen there on Facebook where one swords, uh, swordsmith from, J from Japan had made a thousand swords and he was 75 year old so if he started at 15 then that would have been 60 years of making knife of naked swords that's one every 22 days roughly every 22 days to make a lower a layered sword the way they do it out of the tamagotchi steel with it's, they're not adding 15 and 20. They're just folding and folding and folding and working the impurities out of it. And that's how they refine the steel. And it leaves little ghost lines in it. So, it's like Damascus, only it's just folded with no 15 and 20 or no other metal added for contrast. It's just folded over and over and over again. Okay, I've wandered off topic again. But, but the Hamons. Everybody, every bladesmith, every blacksmith, everybody that's got a a torch can make a hamon. I like to call it the nothing hamon. All you need is your quench tank, your knife, heat, and some way to hold it. You don't. It requires no other special tools other than what you're supposed to have anyway if you're going to be blacksmithing. And making things, making hardening things. So, the nothing is you take a knife, you heat it up to critical, 
you grab this right here grab it and you lay it long ways in the tank that you're gonna have of your oil and you make a line that goes right here everything below that line will be hard everything above that line will be soft there'll be a little bit of mediation in between where the hardness will creep up a little bit but when it gets turns to a solid black color dip it in the oil and wipe it around the first that's the only thing you gotta do is hold it and then when you could pull it out you've got a hummon I mean it's just a, it, all a hummon does is make is a differential between hard steel and softer steel that's basically it other than it makes that line and that line is is just a differential quench so you can do it without anything now the clay coming in is where you get your designs and stuff from now clay and it go like I said goes a long way back and if you're gonna do it like that and you're gonna quench in water you got a clay and everything and I don't quench in water so anyway I quench it in my 11 second oil that's uh, parks 50 equivalent or and or yeah I believe it is yeah I think that's what it was when I got it from uh, McMaster car believe it or not they was pretty reasonable on it so and I plus I had it the next day I mean they're just down well they're about 75 or 80 miles away and they run it straight up here for $15 <laughs> that's it that's all it cost me it was $14.95 for shipping 15 bucks anyway so now for that the best thing you could do when you're doing a, a come on like that is to if you're gonna get it with a pattern on it and to, the wavy lines and everything is you gotta let it dry now what I use since I don't have any satanite and you can run down to the local Ace Hardwire or Home, De or Home Depot or Lowe's whatever get you some Rutland's fireplace mortar it's uh, rated 2,000 degrees so yeah it does good I like it it's a little messy you know you I don't have any rubber gloves them darn things are like $20 a box now when it was like seven <laughs> so uh, Lord what is this world coming to but anyway so that's that so what I do take this little little chopper right here squeeze a little bit on, on it one side bring it over and let me see if I can't just get it right over here where you can see a little better or anything let me set the camera up a little different up there. and down here so I can see okay and zoom it in just a little bit okay I'll just take I get I use God's tools as much as I, I can but anyway you just take this and and use it I always clay around here give this make this soft or I can This is 8670 right here steel. So it's not gonna it's not gonna show the Hamon. So but that don't stop me from doing it. See, it doesn't really matter. 
and even though you make a pattern, they're not gonna, it's not gonna be verbatim of this pattern right here. You're not gonna be able to, to completely 100% say, yeah, this is a pattern that, that will come out and show it exactly like this. No, it don't. It don't work that way. All right, now I hang them up and let them dry. So I move my hanger over here, so over my garbage can there. So yeah, we just do the same thing here. Just little beads. Right there around the, around the wrist. If your tip's really keen, I put just a little bit of, I mean just a little bit on it, not much, not enough to, to affect anything, but just enough to help kind of protect it. Because I got this in a little thing. Now these are 1095, so they will show a pretty good hamon. So... And even though it would probably harden all the way through as thin as it is, I always wipe it back away from the edge. Always. Okay. two done all I gotta do is dry for a while so yep I think I've got about That's uh, that's how I do it. And like I said, you can get various results. Some of the best results that I've ever had, and that I've not really been able to, uh, what you'd say, super uh, do again. You know, I can't can't do the same process again for some reason. I just hadn't been able to copy that for some reason and I done it with some knives and they was boy they turned out beautiful I mean beautiful hormones beautiful and uh, but anyway I was done with the uh, I used uh, just red clay dirt yep I got plenty of it and I've done it and I I used uh, some uh, used some uh, distilled water in it and some uh, window cleaner to help uh, get it uh, consistent where it would uh, where it would go good. It would where it wouldn't where it flow and spread good and not uh, just be on iron globs so it made it smooth smooth and it spread like peanut butter when I put the the, the uh, 
window cleaner in it. So Now, like I said, this will get hard up here. It just won't be as hard as the edge. Yeah. That's right. I say it's messy. It is messy. And I have even uh, cut patterns out in tape and uh, and laid it on there, and it's done okay. So. Okay. See this one, this knife right here is is O1. This is the big one. This one's made out of 01 tool steel, so it will not come on. I don't care what you do to it. It's got too much of the other stuff in it, but I still do them the same. Not, I get no aesthetics out of it. I mean, it's not, you'll never see this line. Not permanently, no. Probably see it when you quench it the first second a few seconds or so but what it does is it makes a differential heat treatment on it and makes this spine softer so I don't so that's what I, all I'm wanting right there is I'm wanting it softer and I do this with, like I said with all of them the 8670 it don't show it there's several others and everything, so, but uh, the 10 still really show it good. The 10, you know, like 1075, 1070, 1084, 1095, all that, they show it good. And I'm assuming that you can do it, yeah, with W1 and W2. And uh, because they're a water hardening steel. So, anyway, no, no lines on this one, because it won't show them. And, I don't remember if it's 80, 8670 or not. I don't know when the when it comes out of the quench, whether what it is, because 8670, like I said, don't want to show the amount. Oh, and I think it's about a tube of tube of this uh, Rutland's here is uh, eight or nine dollars maybe not even that high but uh, this is uh, 
it's on its uh, second batch of knives and I make 10 or 12 at a time so and I've still got over half a tube so even though it looks like a lot and it is a lot it's just um, see it only takes just a minute or two I hope I, I hope you've been seeing this turn that up just a little bit just in case not and uh, if you hadn't I'm sorry I, I apologize I just got the grind and these and so and then stamping them that's the reason they you got the the heat marks on them because I heated them so I could put my uh, stamp in there. I was afraid I was going to have to etch them because they didn't want to, the, me putting them in the stamp o and then hitting them sometimes will make cause them to warp and it'll mess up the, the other the offside a little bit. Be nice if I had a stencil like that that I could do it in, but I don't know anybody to do stencil like that. I tried to get one fellow to do it, and since I wouldn't give on a lot, some a couple of things, he he just said he wasn't going to flat flat wasn't going to do it. So. Yep. I don't know how long it takes, but it don't take that long to do these at all. Probably have a half a half a tube left or so. I might get done. And I've wasted enough here to. I'm gonna do a couple of knives. You know the Satan knot. I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly how how, how expensive it is, but. It's uh, it's fairly expensive comparatively speaking, and but still, it's good. I've used it till I didn't have any more, and this I can run down to the local hardware store and get. Say night I have to order, and for some strange reason they really don't like shipping stuff like that. So now,
Now, when you're doing this and you're using this, well, any of it, you want to you wanna use this in a separate vial or a container to hum on. So if you got a, a vertical tank that's uh, that you're going to be making, you know, non-Japanese type blades that that you don't put a mount on, then you want to keep it out of it because it will build up in the bottom of it, and this stuff will blow off once it gets in there and uh, gets down in there and stays in for a few minutes for several seconds. And the way to really get a good hamon is do a interrupted quench. It's, it's going to water, then into oil. And do it very quickly into, very quickly, into the, uh, into water. I mean in and out, quick. Quick, fast, in hurry, like a count of, I don't know, probably half a second. Because leave it in there long, and you got a good chance that it'll break on you. I've broken several knives doing that, doing the interrupted quench for too long. I was counting to, I was counting to five. And that wasn't fast enough. Should have just stuck it in and pulled it out. And that would have been a whole lot better. So. But once you uh, have a bunch of knives, it's kind of, well, not exactly promised to people, but you break them and, and have to remake them. That uh, do that two or three times. That kind of gets smart after a while. I don't know, hurts your pocketbook just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, ground these to up to a 60 grit and I left about probably a millimeter millimeter and a half maybe up to two in some parts so hopefully I won't have any trouble with them warping And I think it just looks good, personally, myself. So, yeah.
through that. It don't take so long. Like it was about a dozen knives. Well, I've got just a little less than half half a tube. Like I said, this is the second batch that they've that I've done out of it, so. This is this stuff right here is smooth. It's not gritty. I, done, I tried some uh, some other brand. I forget what it was, but anyway, it was really gritty. It bad gritty. So I just didn't like the way it felt, and it I don't think it done as good a job. I don't remember what brand it was. I've been using Rutland's for so long when I'm out of sight night. And Sam's the one that turned me on to using sight night as your hamon clay. So. Okay, I've been out in the smithy playing around today, so anyway, so that's the end of the 12 right there, so that I've clayed up today, that I've ground and, and uh, stamped and uh, put the clay on, so these will probably, I'll let them go for a day or two and before I heat treat them and then it'll be on. Well, alright, I hope, whoops. Uh, um, ugly mug guy. Well, I hope that helps uh, about Hamonian. Like I said, the easiest Hamon is the nothing Hamon. You don't need a thing other than what you've already got to make a knife. And that will work to to do it. So, but like I said, if you want the designs that comes down the blade and everything like this, you need the, some sort of mud, clay, clay and everything. So, you can get I have I have blue clay here and I have red clay blue clay they claim you either find around water or petroleum and well it makes sense I mean because my water comes through the blue clay so I get water from it and I hadn't seen any oil yet so maybe one of these days there'll be an oil field come out come up out there somewhere I'll be like Jed Clampett then. Get that oil well going. But anyway, I uh, thought I'd just run that. Just make a quick video on that. And put it out there in case somebody needs it. it like I said, it's not complicated or anything else like that. The best results is an interrupted quench with a water type hardening steel. Uh, all, the 1090, all the 10 series steels is supposed to be water hardening. But once they get above like 1070, they have a chance, they have a very, very, very likelihood that if you just do it in water, straight water, it will, and if you don't leave it, well, even if it's left thick, chances are it could crack and break. So, I mean, I've done it. I've, I've lost several knives doing that, so I don't do that no more. But that's usually would bring the probably the best results as far as definition and everything is do do the water and oil interrupted quench so anyway i hope this helps if it does great that's what i'm here for if you got any questions uh don't be afraid to ask ask away comments any comments i read them all so and uh well until next time it's bobby shields saying god bless